Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about scaling. Now this is the first video in a six part series I'm going to do, so hopefully you find this useful and I think we really do need a lot of educational resources there, so hopefully this should help. The goal of this series is not to tell you that one chain did it right and one chain did it wrong. It's going to show you that there's trade-offs to every decision a blockchain makes and that leads to certain benefits and drawbacks of every blockchain. Now to help give you an overview of why there are these trade-offs, it's important to start with the blockchain trilemma, which is what we're going to cover today. Now the term trilemma was coined by Vitalik Buterin several years ago, and basically it shows you here that there's three things a blockchain can optimize for, and you can't really get all three on a layer one. So the first piece of the trilemma that you can optimize for is scalability, or the ability to handle a high number of transactions. The second piece you can optimize for is security the ability to defend from attacks, bugs, and other issues. And lastly, you can optimize for decentralization, which basically means there's no central point of control over the blockchain. Now, I personally like to break this down even more simply to basically how much data can we reasonably fit into a block and how fast can we produce blocks? That is really the heart of the trilemma. That is basically going to be the question that every blockchain asks itself and decides to answer, which optimizes for certain parameters in the trilemma. So as a general rule, the more data that we fit into each block and the quicker we produce them, the fewer node operators there will be. Now having a large set of node operators is a core component to decentralization, and we'll get to that in a minute, but before we get into that, it is important to cover what actually is a node. So we're going to use the Ethereum definition, it's pretty much applicable everywhere else, but essentially a node refers to a running piece of client software. And a client is an implementation of, in this case, Ethereum, that verifies all transactions in each block, keeping the network secure and the data accurate. So this is the basic definition of a node operator, and it's pretty clear why we want as many healthy node operators as possible, but why is it that when we increase the size of a block or basically how much data is put in there and how quickly they're produced that the number of node operators always goes down? Well this is because there are several constraints that node operators face. Um, basically a blockchain that maximizes the block space to increase scalability will by definition lower the amount of node operators in the system. So again, the node operators live in a world of constraints, and in general, those three constraints are processing power constraints, basically the CPU of the node or the machine, bandwidth constraints, how fast is the internet and how reliable is it, and storage constraints, what's the disk space like on the machine that the node is running on. So the more information we put into each block and the faster we produce them increases the requirements of the node operators. Basically, these three parameters that I mentioned earlier have to be optimized. So going back to this, why do we want as many nodes as possible, basically? Well, the fewer nodes there are, the easier it is to manipulate the blockchain. So a small party of bad actors can collaborate, work together, and basically corrupt the blockchain in any way that they see fit. Now, the more nodes there are, the harder it is for a group of bad actors to come together and manipulate the chain. Now, this is a quote from Vitalik that I think is actually worth reading the whole thing. Basically, he says, if you have a community of 37 node runners and 80,000 passive listeners that check signatures and block headers, the attacker wins. If you have a community where everyone runs a node, the attacker loses. He then goes on to say that we don't really know where the exact threshold is at where herd immunity against coordinated attacks kicks in, but there is one thing that is absolutely clear. More nodes good, fewer nodes bad, and we definitely need more than a few dozen or a few hundred. There are several different blockchains that have decided to optimize for scalability and minimize security, and that means they basically only have a few dozen or a few hundred nodes. This is the current case of many blockchains today. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. Basically, it's up to the blockchain to decide what they want to optimize for, and it's up to you to choose which blockchain you use. So this slide is meant to show you the trade-offs various blockchains have made. Again, no right or wrong, the top right isn't better than the bottom left or anything like that. It's all about optimizations and trade-offs. On the top right, we can see that Ethereum and Bitcoin optimized for security and decentralization. Bitcoin's a bit more decentralized than Ethereum and a bit more secure, but Ethereum is a bit more scalable. Now at the bottom left, we have Solana and Terra. There's many other blockchains that could go here. I just kept it simple, but essentially Solana and Terra have optimized for scalability. In doing so, they lack decentralization and lack security in some cases. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I know that was kind of a quick take at the trilemma, but I wanted to keep it simple because as you can see here, I have five more videos on the topic. 
Now these are the next five videos I'm going to cover. I would definitely love feedback. If there's something you want to see or are not interested in, you can leave that in the comments below. And definitely subscribe so you stay tuned and get notified when I release a new episode. With that said, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you haven't yet, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.